So hello, my name is Alexander Borschel, and this is the atmospheric water generator that I designed and built at home. Uh, what an atmospheric water generator, or AWG, is, is a device that allows you to pull water from the air, and you, potable water, water you can use. And uh, it's very good for extracting water in areas you do not have access to water. So deserts and stuff, perfect. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to pull it apart and show you guys how to how to make one yourself. Or at least show you how I did it myself. So first we're going to start with the tube. And you just pull it out. I believe these are just connectors, but I like the idea of them creating a chamber, and I'll get into that. As you can see the insides. Okay. So those are the three most expensive pieces of this, but here's the actually most important. Just going to remove the filters. This is called a Mofkina. I found this uh, in a shop. I believe it's some kind of glass like material. I don't actually know. I don't have any way to test it. Um, I figured it was like Pyrex and it would condense air like Pyrex, like uh, the glass we use when we store cooking stuff back in the States. And I guessed right. It turns out it's actually a wonderful condenser. Uh, what I did next then is I was at the time experimenting with how to create a kind of uh, Mm, ad hoc filter system just using uh, spare parts. And I was using cigarette filters. You gotta use clean ones. But what I did is I then take it and I insert it because it's, it's hollow, of course. What this does is first of all it's gonna create a kind of a, it's gonna stop the air from going in and out completely. Some air can still do it, but nowhere near as much. Um, it's it's semi airtight. Uh, if you were to pour water through this, the water would still drip through it, which is what's gonna happen is what I want. What you do next then is you take the other filters. In this case it's going to be uh, three more clean cigarette filters and then you're just gonna work these little suckers in there. Cram them in. Now what this is gonna do is this is the same thing as that but it's tighter. Sorry, blocking it. Now what this is gonna do is because the air is still able to get in and out of both sides it's, it's really actually only able to really get out of here more. This is creating an air flow. Because again, when we use this, it's going to be upright. So we need it to be kind of working with the wind and the angle of how the elevation is. And we'll replace it. I'll get to that in another video. For now, here's the main component. What this does is, as the air is coming in, it can kind of get out. And so it comes here and some of it gets out but a lot of it hits here and comes back around and then it starts circulating and circulating and circulating you're not going to get anything impressive that you can visually see save for when it starts condensing and uh, it's actually starting to right now if you look a little closely Oops, sorry wrong video this is pretty quick it generates about one milliliter of water an hour on a good night that's what I've noticed in the last week um, what you do next then is you take this seal, I took it from the same tubing I used, any any tubing will work, I'll, I'm honest about that. Probably any cigarette butts will, will work because these are extremely cheap cigarettes that I got to, to make this with. Now, you want to take this seal and you want to place it here. In this case, it's not actually airtight, which actually compromises how efficient this is, but once you have it sealed and it's connected, it'll better be able to create that kind of air circulation. Okay, so what we do next then is we're going to take this connector, I guess. I, I believe you it's meant for gardens where you connect it with the uh, hoses. Like you, you plug the hose in that way. We're going to use it the opposite way. We're going to plug it in here. Basically, I want it to be sturdy enough that it can support it upright. Because this is going to be uh, kind of suspended. I'm then going to take this piece here. Now, as you notice, this is hollow. This is not... This is actually pretty much just so I can get the uh, hose on there because the hose doesn't fit very well on this. From here, I then take it. Now, it's a little bit hard with this in it, so I'm just going to take this out for now. Then I'm just going to work this in. Bam. So we have a place for the water to go once it's uh, done. And then we just place this in here. We set it in, and bam. It'll be suspended like this, and this will be supporting it upright. That, or I may invert it. Whatever I decide will work out better. Now, I want to show you guys uh, what I got last night after uh, last night's test. So, here's the um, cigarette. It's, still, it's like sopping. So, I'm just going to... That's about all I'm going to get. So, about 
two or three drops, but this was it by itself. Imagine a hundred of these working together. And I only had it out there for about three or four hours, so it's not bad. So I'd say again, it's about a drop of water per hour. Over a period of a night, it, the dew will probably let it do about six to eight drops of water. But you magnify that by a hundred, you have multiple apparatuses, you suddenly have liters of water that you can use every night. And then if you were to say store it in a cistern and then let that fill up over a period of time and then apply it to everything, you suddenly have a lot of water you can use. Pretty good for the for a desert, I'm going to say. And that's my goal. Is I, would I would like to be able to make this more efficient so that on a larger scale you can convert uh, non-habitable places like straight up like the Negev or the Sahara and turn it green. So thank you guys for watching and um, I hope you guys build one at home. In fact, uh, here's the other one I used last night. Tastes fine.